Joshua, what does CRECO mean? CRECO in full means Constitution and Reform Education Consortium. Mm -hmm. It is a network of civil society organizations mm. in our country that championed and struggled for constitutional reform. It's a 25-year-old network of civil society organizations. Mm. I had a secretariat in Nairobi. How many members do you have? We have currently 22 members spread across the country. Mm. And what do you do now? And uh, uh, these members focus specifically on human rights, democracy, and governance uh, subjects. Okay. And currently, we are engaged in um, educating Kenyans on the implementation of the Constitution 2010 mm -hmm. and uh, trying also to ensure that uh, the provisions of the Constitutions are adhered to and complied to by both the implementers the state mm -hmm. as well as also our uh, citizens are uh, owning it and practicing it mm -hmm. and ensuring that uh, article one of the constitution is solely understood by the citizens which talks about sovereignty sovereignty belongs to the people mm -hmm. and no one is above the law mm -hmm. and that is what we stand for so these civil society organizations how are they registered in kenya are they registered as societies as ngos what are they yeah, uh, NGOs in Kenya have a long history of its, um, you know, formations. Um, we we have multiple uh, registration processes, but um, <clears throat> the main regulator of uh, 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 NGOs in Kenya that uh, is mandated to ensure that there is compliance uh, and monitoring of its activities is the NGO Coordination Board, mm -hmm. uh, which... Um, as a number of uh, non-governmental organizations registered under it. We have also uh, entities that are registered as trusts uh, under the Ministry of Lands. We have also those ones that are registered as associations. We have also community-based organizations that are registered at the county levels. Mm. And we have even chamas mm. who are not even registered. And uh, there are people who have formed or brought themselves together in villages or maybe in urban centers mm. just for a common goal, probably to pull together resources and run uh, 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 strategic um, you know, businesses uh, for the benefit of their community. And it could be even probably environmental or um, uh, doing business to give back uh, to their children, probably facilitating school fees mm. of the needy and all that. So that is a wide range of non-governmental organizations. And most importantly, there are also individuals who don't need registrations. They just come up to defend human rights, and we've seen them in our country. Bold individuals who go to court mm. under public interest litigation, mm. or people even who demonstrate individually and say, I am not happy or I'm not in agreement with certain actions that are happening in our country. It could mm. be environmental, it could be on accountability issues, or even it could be actions by certain groups probably who are connected to the state. Mm. So that is uh, the range of... Oh, what we call, uh, when we talk about NGO, this is what we mean. That is what we mean. And so they can be privately funded. Yes. Like an individual can decide, you know, I'm going to use my resources to take this action. Yes. They can be communally funded. Yes. We are contributing together so that we can push this agenda. Yes. Or you can. They can also be re mobilizing resources externally. Yes. And Eric, other people. And Eric, mm -hmm. uh, NGO work doesn't need necessarily money. mean that it involves money. Mm. It's voluntary. People come up mm -hmm. and say, "I am fighting this injustice." Mm. Mm. Uh, let's say, for instance, you see a child who has been beaten up. Let's say by a parent. Yeah. P probably this parent interprets uh, parenting as that I have a right over this child. Mm -hmm. Probably this parent is even ignorant, ignorant of the Children's Act. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so, so, so individuals who safeguard human rights will come to say, look here, there's violation of the law here. Mm. This child has a right. And, and that is what we mean. So it, it's multi-faceted uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the subject. It could be in agriculture. It could be, it could be in healthy. Mm. It could be, you know, in any other, even mining. Right. Or even it could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, protecting aquatic, uh, you know, lives. So, so even if we say that, and look at the, the perception that has been over very many years, even if we say that NGO work in any given country um is regulated by the government of the day it is not 
operationalized by the government and it is not managed by the government, which is why the non-governmental comes into play. Yes. Would that be correct? Yes, that is correct. It's independent of the state, but that does not mean that they work against the law. Right, okay. It's governed by the rule of law. Mm -hmm. The set uh, rules and regulations, as well as also the laws of the land mm -hmm. that are there, but I believe that as we even talk about compliance and adherence to the law, mm -hmm. uh, there could be laws that are also repressive. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we have liberal democracy in our country. But if you have a state that would want to promote illiberal democracy, that NGOs now come up to say that is not the law. And you've seen us going to court to challenge some of certain actions and proposals. And even currently, even when you look at the National Dialogue Committee, there are proposals that they have put in place and they were inviting people to submit memoranda. Mm -hmm. NGOs play uh, a forefront role mm -hmm. to mobilize citizens mm -hmm. in terms of also collecting their views and compile the same and submit. However, who has carte blanche here in terms of operations when it comes to the things that will be discussed, said, done, administered in the country, whether or not NGOs have been given the right to operate? Who can then come and decide, actually, you know what, this is how you're going to run regardless uh, of what your mandate as an NGO, whether you're internal or external, who can actually come around and say this is how you ought to or not operate? In fact, we don't need someone who can come around to police and uh, sanction us on how to operate because we, we have no syllabus. Sure, but you're dealing within the boundaries of a sovereign state. Yes, we are dealing within the boundaries of a sovereign state under the given set of laws. Mm -hmm. So it is the interpretation of the law that guides us, not individuals, not people, but authorities and institutions that are put in place. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we know that our parliament mm -hmm. is that arm of government uh, through representation that will pass such laws. Mm -hmm. And it will be in compliance with the law of the land, which is the mother law which is the constitution of kenya but do they need to then come and have a conversation with ngos as entities or as those who are coming to operate in concert that this is what we have decided to do can we have a talk about can we have a discussion about it or can as you said an entity government come out and say look in regard to policy and how we should operate from today moving forward this is how we are going to do it should they be having a conversation with you consultation. or should they sh be informing you of future operations uh, consultations and dialogue is absolutely necessary okay because both government and the ngos exist because of the people of kenya mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are the people we serve both of us mm -hmm. including also the media mm -hmm. including uh, the church or the uh, you know the, the mosque all these people are targeting common group mm -hmm. which are the citizens of this country mm -hmm. however uh, independence and separation of responsibilities needs to be safeguarded. Mm -hmm. No one uh, dictates the other on how to operate. Even NGOs cannot dictate government, but they can hold the government to account. Okay. But using the set laws that are, are, are available. Mm -hmm. These laws that are in place are not government laws. They are laws of the country. Mm -hmm. That also government government also uses Even the government NGOs also bound. uses yes. the citizens of this country also uses mm -hmm. and everybody else including mm -hmm. the media. Mm -hmm. So consultations as you've put in place in terms of agreeing to say that this is the framework that is in place, uh, adherence to it and ownership to it is also um, um, one of the principles in terms of promotion of a democracy such as the one that we have in our country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joshua. You've talked about holding each other accountable. Mm. So the NGOs can hold the government accountable. Yes. Using institutions that have been established by law. Exactly. Right? The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the judiciary, and others. Yes. That's how you hold the, the government accountable. Yes. Or even petitioning parliament, right? Yes. Or, or even speaking to the media. Or speaking to the media. Yes. For holding Kenyans the government accountable. How does the government hold the NGO world accountable? Uh, the government holds the NGO world accountable by having NGOs uh, report to the authorities that have been put in place. Uh, and okay. I'll give an example. Okay. Just pause you first. May I? Mm -hmm. 
There is the registration. Yes, please. Who do they register with? They register with the government of Kenya. Okay. Which institution? We, yes. Is there a specific institution that deals with the registering of uh, NGOs? Yes, we have the NGO uh, uh, coordination board. Okay. We have uh, uh, trusts. Yes. We have the attorney general's okay. office. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, uh, the, 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 the county society. governments mm -hmm. at but, the county level. But the NGO coordination board has that primary role of ensuring that NGOs comply with the rules and regulations that are enshrined in this country. Is that not so? That is true. Yes. But, 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 but they will not like um, even target like CBOs because CBOs are also registered under different framework mm -hmm. yes. at the county level. Yes. But here is the catch. In 2013, mm -hmm. uh, Kenyans through parliament passed what's called the Public Benefits Organizations Act. Yes. A law that has existed for 10 years yes. but has never been oper operationalized. Mm. Never been operationalized. Or has never been operationalized. Meaning? Has never been implemented has mm. never been put into life. Mm. It is uh, a, a law mm. uh, that was put in place uh, to have NGOs uh, regulated, uh, uh, have their work um, uh, self-regulate itself through, um, you know, um, uh, let me say, one umbrella of an authority. Like the way I've explained that we are registered in a different ways. Mm. Yes. It could be CBOs, it could be associations, it could be company limited by guarantee, it could be non-governmental under the NGO coordination board. So you mm. see that even the NGO coordination board has no role um, over these CBOs. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? Yes. So in 2013, we passed a law as a country. And the different regimes, whether it's 2013, uh, uh, 2017, 2017, 2022 uh, regime, they have never implemented. But government attempted to amend it. Imagine amending a law that has never been implemented. Who's supposed to implement it? Uh, it's, it's the government. Because, you know, at that time... And they haven't implemented They have never it. implemented it. What does it impl implementation entail? Implementation means mm. putting structures uh, that operationalizes it in place, such as rules, uh, I mean, such as uh, regulations mm. that would enable it to be implemented. Mm. Because, you know, it's an umbrella law. But it requires structure. Like now, for instance, we are supposed uh, to put in place a, 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 an office that is going to have all NGOs register afresh. Mm. And afresh. Have, yes, afresh. Mm. That was it. That was the case then. Mm -hmm. uh, and have, it was actually called the federation, yep. where it's, compo it's composed of representatives of government and non-governmental organizations mm. so that at least it, so it keeps one register yes it keeps one register all public benefits organizations, organizations. in the country yes Whether but between CBOs, 2013 ngos yes, whatever exactly eric but between 2013 2015 the government attempted to uh, amend it but the amendments the pro which were proposed were mm. suspect and ngos protested and successfully even uh, uh managed to challenge that mm -hmm. in court and that was shelved in fact, we were moved from the Ministry of Devolution then, and we were put, I mean, we were put in the Ministry of Interior and Security. Mm -hmm. And we ask ourselves, are NGOs a security threat in this country? Is it a, a, a security apparatus it's of this country? I mean, in fact, the right place that NGOs need to be put is uh, uh, planning and development. Mm. Because, you know, we contribute largely into the development yeah. and planning of this country, whether it's to prove through policy engagement and all that. But being put under the Ministry of Interior and Security, for me, I think, is lack of political goodwill. Mm. It's trying to rein in. Uh, we are talking about this in the context of something that happened on Friday. There was yes. a press release re uh, issued by the Principal Secretary for Internal Security and National Administration, Dr. Raymond Omolo, and I'm going to read the press release. He says... Following our review of the operations of the non-governmental organizations and public benefits organizations registered in Kenya, the government has noted with concern the prevailing misalignment of international donor and management systems. This model sadly leans more towards meeting the interests of donor countries than supporting Kenya's national development agenda and priority needs. This is not only ineffective, but also impairs the ownership of development plans for Kenya as the host country. Further, it has the potential of weakening our capacity to accurately monitor and manage donor aid management in the best interest of our national security. 
The government recognizes the critical role donors aid plays in our socioeconomic development, but for purposes of mutual accountability between the host country and its development partners, the aid architecture must comply with the global best practices and the established regulatory frameworks. In light of the above, the government has formally written a notice to all NGOs and PBOs in the country to comply with this requirement and align their operations with Kenya's development priorities captured in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. This will guarantee greater partnership and synergies among different parties working in the aid industry to ensure that donor aid is not only producing better impact for Kenya, but also benefits local communities. Our prime focus is on optimizing the value of all projects and programs funded through international aid to ensure they complement our development plan outlined in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Finally, the government is progressively heightened and heightening its capacity for surveillance against illicit financial flows as one of the strategic interventions to disrupt criminal and terror financing activities. So first of all, ask Kreko, did you receive this communication? Because it says we have, we have, they have, have written to all NGOs and PBOs operating in the country and told them, guys, 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 you go bottom up, bottom up, bottom up. We haven't received that communication. Neither of our members received that communication. We just saw it in social media. Mm -hmm. But uh, we believe that is just an empty threat. It what do you understand? What do you understand the government to be saying here? It has happened before in this country, before the 2022 general elections. There was a note verbal that was written to all donors in this country that uh, funding of programs on observation of, electro of elections, whether it is mm -hmm. Pre uh, before, mm -hmm. during, and after, mm -hmm. would need to have an approval from government. Uh, we challenged the same, and uh, uh, we called the government, the then government, to order that that was not in line to that. And and and, and you know, uh, uh, when I look at that, uh, uh, Latif, uh, I mean, it's mischievous. Mm -hmm. Let me just use that word. Why? You what know why? In page, in, page, uh, in page uh, sixty-one mm. of uh, the plan, which is by the Kenya Kwanza. And they, uh, I have it here. Mm. Um, the government, uh, you know, promised to strengthen, um, uh, um, you know, accountability and leadership. And uh, part of um, their part of their promise in this uh, plan, and I'm going to read it, eh, is in the strengthening leadership and accountability and uh, depersonalizing our politics. In fact, that is personalizing politics. Oh, boy. because we have a liberal democracy. It is not illiberal in the sense that the Kenya Kwanzaa government promised to implement the Public Benefits Organizations Act immediately they come into power. It is in their in the in their manifesto. And, and, one, and, and uh, one year has gone by. Have they implemented? They haven't. They have not even entertained any conversation around its uh, implementation. So, and we are telling Kenyans that that uh, communication from the PS is 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 is, is suspect. And uh, even the use of, like, we are uh, entities that um, illicit finances are transmitted to, through NGOs. If I can explain to you, I am a head of an institution, a mm. non-governmental organization. Mm. Getting funding from donors is not a joke. The level of procurement in terms of call for proposals, writing all those things, and the bidding. By the time you access that money, you will have gone through checks and balances. And remember, Latif, these are not just money that is idling somewhere, probably in the US or in Europe. These are also taxpayers' money that is also approved by parliaments of those countries that channel resources to help needy populations in, developed, in developing countries. But that is just part. Like you said, uh, NGOs can be funded by governments, by individuals, by societies, by groups. Yes, but you see, but you see For that... For yours, because you're applying to an entity that is public funded, you have all those rigorous ways. Who's to tell that another one is not funded by an individual who says, Wantakanini, shika. Yeah, but you see, uh, uh, that communication there <laughs> is in violation of the spirit of this government. Where the majority of us last uh, found? Is it not in the NGO world? Are who, who, who are the members of Chamas? Who are the members of CBOs? Are they not hustlers? Mm. Who, who are even organizing themselves to access what is so called the hustler fund? 
are they not people who are organized groups that this uh, communication is uh, targeting mm. so this is uh, uh, this is uh, let me call it uh, what uh, um, it's ironical in the sense of uh, communicating and and it's not it's not the first time to hear this we used to have somebody who was heading the national ngo coordination board uh, i don't want to name the, the, the he, he used to, he used to threaten us uh, through letters that he was posting in social media you, and we used not to receive the letters are you referring to mr fazul <laughs> i think you mentioned and, and yeah, I, I am mentioning public. because he headed so, that organization so we we saw that and, and 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 the target was critical ngos that were dealing with subjects that were not friendly including calling government on extrajudicial killings mm. including c- calling government out of order on um, um, um you remember this thing that was going on in the indian ocean um, ransoms mm. pirates pirates yes and you know that was also part of the uh, transmission of the illicit uh, funds and mm. you know they uh, like for instance uh, muri and haki africa and the kenya human rights commission have programs around tracking illicit funding mm. And those culprits who are also trafficking that money are not from the NGO world. They are the ones who are exposed to that. Mm. These are powerful individuals who are in government. Mm. These are powerful individuals who are also associated with politicians. And they are known. Although I don't want to mention names here, but <laughs> what happened in that case when uh, they came out strongly to say that we have the facts here mm. through investigations, um, uh, w- 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 in the process of exposing them, they were clamped. And if you remember, those offices and even their bank accounts were closed. 800 mm. NGOs were d- deregistered. At that 800. time. Yes, mm. at that time. Uh, and, and the deregistration, the, the uh, uh, my brother, was not informed only just because of those actions. Either probably they have not been um, 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 uh, have not reconciling been their returns to the NGO condition. Well, reasons, reasons were given. Do you Let's know? take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> 27 minutes to nine. We'll be back shortly. We want to understand, okay, of course, the NGOs reacted this way. I expected the NGOs to react this way. But then why are the NGOs reacting this way? Uh, what is so hard about saying, let's align our mm-hmm. programs? Because we'll discuss this after that you come back from this break. That is not the message. <laughs> that's not the message that the NGOs no. are reading from this. No. Because they choose not to read from this? Or no, because, because that's not we the know that is not the message. Okay. Yes. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. We are hosting Joshua Chamwoni. He is the executive director of CRECO. CRECO again in full, Joshua? Constitution and Reform Education Consortium. There you go. Back shortly. Good morning. Good morning and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from a Kikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people and we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. They, we used to tell Honda uh, Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is doing a conmanship earlier. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And I mabo, utaona dunia tu. The Situation Bo. Kenya's biggest conversation. Nairobi, chance of rain later on with highs of 28 and lows of 17 today. All right, looking into Nyeri, rains and sunny intervals at highs of 25 and lows of 15. Nakuru will see highs of 25 and lows of 14. Uh, with sunny intervals through today uh, looking into Eldoret we'll see highs of 22 and lows of 12 with a chance of rain and sunshine throughout Monday Mombasa uh, partly sunny going to highs of 30 and lows of 23 and we'll see highs of tw- of highs of 30 and lows of 24 in a sunny Malindi. Kisumu through today will see highs of 28 and lows of 19 and sunny through most of Monday and Kakamega throughout Monday will see highs of 29 and lows of 17. Kampala today is cloudy, highs of 28 and Dar es Salaam will see highs of 29. We'll see highs of 22 in Johannesburg and Lagos will see highs of 29. A cloudy Kinshasa will see highs of 30.
spice up your life. Monday morning, we're seeing traffic in different parts of the city today. Um, coming off Thicker Super Highway, it's still heavy. It's bumper to bumper all the way through and through uh, to the CBD. Uh, going towards that Pangani underpass looks like a nightmare for a lot of folks today and moving very slowly, even after you use the service lanes to come out there. All right, traffic is then going through towards Wangari Mathai. Are you going to get towards Muranga Road? That continues. Gong Road is busy this morning. We're looking at heavy traffic on Jogo Road going out towards Landis and then touching on Kamkunji. It's been heavy on Magadi Road today, spilling over towards Langata Road and then into the CBD. Everywhere you look this morning, you will find it. Um, let's try to keep safe regardless of what it is. Let us know if you find a good route today with where folks can escape to Spice FM KE on X. up your life mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself mornings done right 94 this continues with joshua changoni from krako city this communication from the principal secretary for interior and administration is basically saying um, would like the NGOs that are financed through international aid agencies to also coordinate their programming with the government agenda and the government programs for purposes of ownership. So that as you're finishing your project, it's a five-year project, thereafter, who takes it up? If we did not know about it or you were doing it, how shall we come and take it? You know, if it's about co-ownership of them. You know, and you say... That is the message that's being written, but that's not the message that's being no, it isn't interpreted because, from this. Because when you read that statement, essentially, mm. I interpret it as saying that mm. that which he's saying is not happening. It is suggesting that these NGOs exist outside and function and practice, apply their trade outside. Of the alignment of government. Yes, policy. exactly. And that is not true. Mm. That is not true because what the work that the NGOs do, you think of any NGO, you will need to show me an NGO whose work is misaligned for this statement to make sense. Let's 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 open this up a little bit and say, okay, yes. fine. If we're looking at a development agenda by mm -hmm. the Kenya Kwanzaa government today, essentially, if we can say broadly, what they're saying is for any NGO in operation in the country today, we would like you to kind of align yourself and make sure that you are essentially in line with the development agenda of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. So far? Yep. Right. What you're saying, CT, and maybe Joshua to some extent, is that there are no NGOs in the country today who are operating outside of those parameters. Whether you've come into the country to make sure that water is available, that is plugged in directly to Kenya Kwanzaa. Whether you've come to make sure that young girls can go to school, that's plugged in directly to the agenda. Mm. Whether you are working in the country to make sure that finances, that's, you know, little, little, is available to people in terms of micro grants mm. to then be able to do business. That is right in line yes. with the with agenda. Kenya Kwanzaa develop bottom up agenda. Mm. So what you're saying, Joshua, is that that's what we're doing anyway. Yes. So and I want to argue doing, that maybe not. And so what they're saying here, from what I understand, is mm. in as much as they have a general understanding that NGOs generally are coming to um, work as a complementary service to mm. government. They also have the understanding that there are those who have come in and who are operating, who are working outside, who are coloring outside of the lines. And this communique mm. is to let you know it's that align should them. you be doing that, what we want to do is to bring you no. inside the lines. The I don't read it that way. I actually read it this way. Now, there are NGOs that are working in the country. Yes. You're working in communities. Yes. You're uh, pushing the development agenda. Yes. Okay. But... When the government is working on this and you're working on this, you are basically being, you're uh, doing double work. But Joshua, okay? saying it's not possible for you to become an, as an it, NGO and work outside of those lines. Not, not outside of the lines. You're working within the law, mm. but you're implementing a project and yet the government is also in the same area implementing the same project. And we've talked about this here many times. Mm. Where you find in a community, there are four different water projects. Pro water projects happening at the same time. Mm. Somebody is digging water pans. Somebody else is seeking boreholes. Somebody else is creating irrigation, uh, right. irrigation uh, areas and all. 
if all of you coordinated and worked together and seen how can we synergize would actually benefit this community better but you find how many billions of dollars of donor money has been spent in this country and if you look at it can you account for it and say this went here it is still operational this went here it is still operational I would argue that there is a lot of money that has been spent here in this country by donor agencies, international aid that's come in that today we can't follow up on. Mm. And I think it's just about how do we coordinate and say we are working in Kitui. In Kitui, those who are working in health, please come and find out what are we are doing in Kitui on health. Those who are working on agriculture, please come and find out what is the government, national government and the Kitui county government doing on water in Kitui. What are we doing on agriculture and so on and so forth? Do, do you know? Do you know? Coordinate. Uh, do, do you know why I I have taken the position I've taken? Mm. Usually, when NGOs come into the country are working, believe me, that's what they do. Uh, they don't work independent of government institutions. They, they they don't start their own standalone outfit to do what they want to do. Usually they'll partner with the parent ministry, the parent department, the parent. That's what they do. Whether even even at the county level, that is what they do. They actually work with the existing, and it is those entities that tell them this is where we need help. This is where we'd like you to work with us. This is what we'd like you to do to help us do. Now, on paper, yes. No, no, no. In practically, practice, in practice, not all NGOs in no. this country will say that they started a project because there was an end, there was an MOU signed with the local administration, the local county, and this is what they did. Otherwise, you'd not find. Right now, it's about tree planting. How many NGOs are involved in tree planting in this country? I have no idea. Are all of them working with the organization of the Ministry of Environment and at county level? But Eric, if you go to a certain area and you find to ensure that these NGOs are aligned, there I mean, you go. You hence, see, the, hence the memo. No, that memo is a blanket statement, and that is why I'm not giving it breathing space. Let me ask, Joshua mentioned something earlier, and he, one of the things that you said, Joshua, is that you see this as a threat, right? Why would government threaten anybody for whom you've already established that there must be a working relationship? These entities would not be in Kenya, whether they're internal or external, would not be in Kenya having not been granted the provisionary status to operate, right? Why would then government threaten them? I mean, you don't wake up one Monday morning and decide, well, uh, or Friday in this case, why would I just make a threat to these folks if I didn't smell a rat somewhere? Yeah, the, 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 let me make the following clarifications first, yes. that NGOs are not part of Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto. Mm. But NGOs would want to be part of the Vision 2030 because that brings everybody in our country. Because that is the national agenda, development agenda of the country. The way NGOs would want to align themselves to different programs that will enable the achievement of Vision 2030 is the same way Kenya Kwanza or let's say um, um, the opposition party aligns wherever uh, itself. Mm. So we see it as a threat, as if they want us to force us to be for, to get us forced into the agenda mm -hmm. because we are not part of it. We are not part of it. We are not part of it in the sense that this is what they used it to secure votes from the people of Kenya. We had also other parties who also sold their agendas. So if at the moment we subscribe to one entity, that is a threat to democracy in this country and the values that we stand for of liberal democracy. Then secondly, government is also a recipient of, NG, of, of donor money. It's not that they don't get money to complement their efforts on healthy issues. Equally also to NGOs. In fact, the larger percentage of donor money is directed to government uh, departments than even NGOs, and, and there are facts to that effect. If you look at the National uh, NGO Coordination Board rep report on uh, 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 what NGOs got in the financial year 2021-2022, it's just, you know, a small amount of, mm. of, of, of resources. So why talk to the funders uh, when they were admitted into the country either through their foreign missions mm -hmm. to operationalize their activities and foster international relations. Yep. 
because we have other global agendas such as the SDGs mm -hmm. and you subscribe to that yeah. because we know that is a uh, linking Kenya to the community of nations we yeah. just had the African um, climate, climate summit here in Nairobi mm. I've, I've come from uh, El Geo Marakwet over the weekend uh, planting trees under Lengoletu initiative uh, CBO it's not government mm -hmm. G we were not even funded by a donor, mm -hmm. but it's just a group of young professionals who went to primary schools to educate children on how to plant a tree. It was governed by the media. So is that what government wants also, wants also to regulate through this uh, uh, communication that has come here in place? Joshua, they are not regulating. Would, they, would government not <laughs> interpret that as a contribution to the 15 billion agenda that has been uh, mentioned by the... Do we need emphasis to say that it is black and white that uh, NGOs must subscribe but to, to, to the bottom-up um, 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 uh, you know, uh, agenda. Joshua, why, why, why are you taking it to the very extreme and seeing only the negative? Just look at it this way. This model that they have, they said, we have reviewed the model the NGOs and PBOs are doing. The Kenya government has noted with concern the prevailing misalignment of international donor aid management systems. The model leans more towards meeting the interests of the donor countries than supporting our own agenda. And this is what we are saying. Now, listen, as a country, for the next five years, the administration is moving this way. Okay? When the administration comes and says we're moving this way, the previous administration had said big four. This one is saying bottom-up economic transformation agenda, which is still the big four, if you just look at it, right? The main agenda. If this is what we are saying, and we are putting 3.6 trillion shillings of our annual budget towards these kind of programs. How about your 3.6 trillion shilling of international aid also coming in and seeing how can we work together? We're talking about planting trees. There are very many NGOs in this country, not only be in this Ruto administration, even before, who've been in this journey of planting trees. Planting trees, not growing trees. Some of them have been on growing trees, other, others have been on planting trees, and you write your reports to your donors and say, we planted 10,000 trees in this and this and other area. But in terms of those trees surviving, they don't survive. Now, if the focus of the government is, how do we grow trees, not just plant trees? You come in and support us in nurseries. Another in aid uh, agency comes and support us in distribution of the seedlings. Another one comes and support us in growing those trees. What's wrong with that, Joshua? Let me ask you, Eric. Ask me. When you read this letter, yes. are there fundamental disclosures that needs to happen? For instance, where is the review report? Because they say we've reviewed, we've whatever, something like that. Has that been disclosed to the public? If they are talking about illicit finances, I mean, uh, transmissions, is there a report from government? Because we know a report from government would be more authoritative and say, look here, this is what we found. We engaged in this for the past one year that we've been in power. This is, these are our findings, hence these recommendations. But you see, this is just a generic letter. It's just an improved version of the note verbal that went to donors before the elections. Mm -hmm. And we, how I'm reading this, it is, um, it is a characteristic of uh, uh, um, um, a communication that is not comfortable from liberal democracy. Do because think, NGOs, NGOs have come out think, very strongly. Mm. Let's say, for instance, yeah. uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, the opposition went for Mandamano yes. during um, um, you know, the last uh, three months yes. or so, uh, and they raised the issues, and one of it was cost of living. Yes, there are things that probably NGOs also found it um, legitimate to also foster such as co high cost of living, yes. which was really biting, and it's still biting for, for that matter. Yes, um, uh, issues um, <clears throat> around having transparent elections and having also harmony in the country. Yes, because people are dying, yes. and even raising issues around deaths that were caused uh, during that mandamano, and. And you, uh, if you remember what was coming from the Inspector General of Police to say that, we need to get permission from him. So, is Article 37 of the Constitution the Inspector General of Police of this country? <laughs> <laughs> so, we came out strongly to say that is not what the Constitution, and I was one of them, who say that Article 37 of, uh, of the Constitution talks about peaceful picketing. Yes. The killings that we saw in Yalenda, or let's say, for instance, in Kibra and the streets of Nairobi, was not necessarily a definition of what was called mass demonstration. 
because it doesn't need to involve the destruction of property and killing of and innocent of people or even using life bullets yeah. and even harmful tear gas. Yeah. So assume we were in bed with Kenya Kwanza. Would we speak like that? And that is what these communications want to beg us also. To to, to, mm. Yes, it wants us to bend. Apana. <laughs> Let me ask you. Do you think the government actually wants to block international aid from coming into the country? country. Because that's what it, it sounds like. That's what you're saying. No. Would the government be saying we do not want international aid to come to the country? No, they want to control it. They want to control it. They want to control how yes. international aid comes to the country. Yes. No, yes, and they want to control how, even if you look at what... Happened. But you've already said, City, yes. many of these, especially the state-funded NGOs, those ones that get money from citizens of other countries, already align their programs with the government. No, let me very let, level let, of, let you, of, I've read the plan. USAID, uh, FCDO, and others, mm. they align. Uh, yes, let they you, I've read the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, the, mm. which they call it a plan. Mm. Mm. When you read it, it's so admirable. I wish they implemented the way they presented it to Kenyans when they were seeking for votes. They used the human rights language, so attractive, even NGO language for that matter, but the practice is opposite. Including this letter from the PS interior. So we should not even entertain conversations around this letter. We just <laughs> need to call it out of order and say this is not okay. Let me this ask, is not let me part ask. of liberal democracy. Joshua, Joshua, it is illiberal. Joshua, allow me to ask this question in, a, diff do. in a different manner. Yes. What do you think then, not saying that it's a threat, what do you think then is behind this communication? Let's put it that way. What is behind this communication then? Because we also know that it is difficult then to speak in absolutes. It cannot be that every single NGO in the country, external again or internal, is behaving in the same way. Cannot be. Politically, when you interpret so this. So what's behind when this? When you interpret this politically, and let me now do political interpretation. Mm. As somebody who has been in governance for more than 18 years. This uh, is a way of um, undermining NGOs that have been stable in this country to speak truth to power. And we are aware that there are comfortable NGOs that get express support from government. And probably resources will be channeled to those ones if we allow this control to take place. And there will be government-owned NGOs. That is a fact. And you will see what has happened to the NGO council, which is now domiciled in Nyai House. And having it to sit in the NGO coordination board as a member. So those are things that uh, we are aware that has been happening. It's only that... It's a matter of time that now these things are trying to do it, to come out. And then the last bit mm. is this. If you interpret it politically, this is a resource allocation question. Have the international community know that this is the ex express uh, wishes of the government of the day. And remember, we have about 54 countries uh, in Africa. And Kenya is at the middle level. I mean, we were, we were declared by the former regime, which is not true, actually. It was also one way of curtailing funding. And you see, there was a shift of donor aid that would come to benefit the people of Kenya. And it went to... When it became a middle income. It, it went to other countries. We are not a middle <laughs> we income are not, country. We are not. We've it, never been. That's a joke. We've never been. So it is, it is in the same spirit. It's just a continuation so it of is, the... It is, you know, removing funds from NGOs. Exactly, that is the fact. There are those who will argue, Joshua. And then they will have those yeah. who are sympathetic of the regime receive this money. There and those, we are saying that is a big no. There are those who would argue, Joshua, that, you know, the NGO community in this country does not want a light shone on them. Mm -hmm. You do not want accountability. And that's why we're asking you, so how does, how does the government, how do we as citizens hold NGOs accountable? We can hold our government accountable. You're receiving money in this country, operating in this country. How do we hold you accountable? The fact that you have not been as vocal for the implementation of the PBO Act raises questions. No, we've been vocal. We've been vocal. And we are on the record. How we've even gone to court. How many court cases are there? Uh, we have even a we, we had a court case which was challenging the amendments. Eh, if you remember, that was an uh, that, amendment. Uh, that was an amendment. Mm -hmm. um, when this uh, manifesto of the Kenya Kwanza came, and they, they succeeded to, re, to 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 go. To, I mean, to uh, secure power. Mm. We thought it was going to be implemented. It's just one year down the line, mm. 
Uh, four years remaining, do we expect anything to happen? We have seen uh, conversations. Lack of the food. education mm -hmm. sector has been very strong on CBC. We had a, a clinical officer in front of us. They have been very vocal on the issue of the universal health coverage and the welfare of, of healthcare sector in the country. NGOs have been very quiet on this particular No, we haven't been quiet, no, Eric. And this is not to dispute you, uh, your observation. Eh? Mm. We are on record, and I can even issue you uh, with the press releases that we've given out. Mm. And even the meetings that we've had with the NGOs. How many the demos have you had? Uh, How many times have you gone to return to the office, even to the PS, Raymond Molo, and said, we want, in, instead of telling us all these things about funding, implement PBO Act? Actually, we are on record mm. having uh, had a conversation with the NGO Coordination Board. Actually, we've had four meetings this year. And uh, the idea was to have dialogue and consultations mm. with the Ministry of Interior, the parent ministry where we are under, to, to have some of these... Um, uh, laws also are operationalized and um, uh, that is a fact and and my colleagues in the sector can uh, can bear witness because i was part of that meeting uh the the the, the, the agenda is um, to have a complementary eff effort or symbiotic effort between uh, ngos and government in a way that we are also serving the citizens of this country in a better way mm. than ha uh, being radical. And of course, the and journey in that, of it's and, been ten years and, of a law that uh, has not and been the journey of NGOs in this country has uh, transformed. Uh, how NGOs behaved during the Moi regime is not necessarily maybe during the Uru regime mm. and even now. Mm. But we are seeing a situation there where by now we are most likely to go to the Moi era. Because, they, because, they are touching you, because they are touching your money what now. What do you anticipate will come out of this? Out of this communique, what will happen as a result of that? If that we, there will be a battle. Think? There will be a battle between uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, uh, government and the NGOs over interpretation of such kind of communication. You know, it's it's lived experience. This is what... Uh, um, we, now I'm joining that conversation that, that we are reacting to because mm. there is need for coordination. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there, 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 there is need for oversight. There's no doubt about it. Because in the absence of oversight, the very thing that Eric is saying is what will happen. Yeah. However, lived experience is that that is not all. There's always something else beyond what seems clear that we need oversight. There's always more. Mm. That is the problem. Yes. There's always more. Mm. There's a lot of money that's coming into this country going into communities, communities waking up and working on this particular and, project. And Eric, let, project let, comes let, to let an end after four you. years. Let, let, let me tell These you. people walikuja hapa wakatujengea hii wakaenda. We have no idea what happens. No, no, no Eric, let me tell you. Coordination. Let, let, let me tell you, Eric. Yeah. Uh, In 20 seconds. There is now the monster mm. which is called disinformation and misinformation. Mm. And this is it. We were called evil society. Busy bodies. People who thrive on donor money. Which was false. And that was propagated by the state. So we had the Kenya Kwanzaa government to be in consultation and dialogue with the NGOs for the harmony and serving uh, the people of Kenya mm. in a way that everybody benefits and also understands each other. each other. Bottom line, Raymond Molo says that he has communicated with NGOs. You say you have not we received haven't. this and your colleagues have also not received this. So Raymond Molo, please communicate please. with the NGOs, yeah. engage with them. Thank you very much for joining us, Joshua. Joshua Changon is the executive director of Creco. He's been our guest this morning. Keep it here for more conversations. It's 9 a.m. Spice up your life.